those words there be light and there was and in that same breath the stars fell in line with one voice creation cries you do
on, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. If you've come into this place to magnify the Lord, can you open up your mouth and bless his name? Come on, before a song is sung, before we do anything else, can you open your mouth and praise him? Your, come on, praise your God. Praise your God. Praise your God. Lord, we thank you for what you are going to do today. We thank you for the miracles, the signs, and the wonders. We align ourselves with your agenda. We align ourselves with your will. And we say all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together like this. Come on, y'all can clap louder. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord.
my God is alive. How could I keep it inside? So I'm gonna Oh my soul.
transition until he rolls. Come on, get what you need, get what you need today. out 24 hours a day. There may be times when you can't even have the strength to pray, but worship will do. But worship will do. I'm reminded of a story. I was hanging out with my uncle yesterday, and his wife just lost her mom, 93 years old. Loved the Lord with all her heart. Loved the Lord with all her heart. And she was at a point, she had no more strength. She didn't even have the strength to speak. But as I was talking to my aunt, she tells me, the one thing I heard her do all the time, even when her eyes were closed, she would hum worship songs. She would hum worship songs even when she couldn't speak, she still worshiped God in her heart. And that's the mindset that we should have, that, that when we're going through the hardships of life, when things are good, when things can just, we're riding along, we should have a heart of worship. We should always have a heart of worship to pause and just thank God for what he does. Praise him for all that he does. Praise him for what he's created. I walk in the street, I praise him for the wind. I praise him to see the trees move. I, I praise him when it rains. I praise him that no matter where you find yourself, church, everybody online, no matter where you find yourself, find yourself in a place of praise unto our Lord. No matter where you find yourself, if you would do me a favor, practice that right now. Take a moment and just give them all your praise. Give them all your praise. Oh! 
everybody that's watching online. Welcome, welcome, welcome. wife Charlotte, we welcome you. We want to take a moment to welcome any visitors for the first time here in Harvest Fields with us. So if you're visiting with us, we don't want to embarrass you. We really want to welcome you. And we have, we have a little 
like a welcome packet for you, a welcome gift for you. So if you're here for the first time, do me a favor. Can you hold a hand up high for me? Hold a hand up high and keep it there. Keep it there, okay? Welcome, welcome everybody. Anybody up in the balcony? Yup, I see a hand in the balcony too. I see it in the balcony. Welcome everybody. The ushers are gonna hand you a quick welcome packet, okay? And welcome, we pray that you enjoy service. Okay, we pray that you enjoy service. As you can see, we're a crazy bunch up in here for Christ. We love Jesus. That's what's up. Amen. Amen. You know, we're about revealing God, reaching people, and restoring lives. That's the mission of Harvest Fields, that in everything we do, we do that. We try to accomplish that. And you see it evident. You see it evident in the Harvest Gold Ministry. Uh, this week past, the uh, Missions Ministry did the same thing. Reveal God, reach people, and restore lives in Colombia, right? We did it for the block party, reaching the neighborhood. That's what we're all about here in Harvest Fields, right? But we want you guys to be part of that plan too. It's not just a church thing. I always say it, it's a heart thing. It's got to be a thing in your heart to want to go out and reveal God, and to reach people. And you watch how God restores their lives. Why? Because of the seed you planted. You are the church. You are the church, not the four walls. It's a beautiful building. God has blessed us with it. But you are the church. You go out and spread the gospel to people and tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. That's revealing God, reaching people, and restoring lives. All right? And we wanted to take a moment to always cover our tithes and offerings in prayer. And we thank God for tithes and offerings because that's what just keeps us going. That's what keeps us advancing. All right, you'll see behind me there's multiple ways to give. But if you need an envelope in the house, the ushers are going to walk up and down the aisles, and you could do an envelope and just put it in the tithing box in the back. But it's through your tithes and offerings that you see things getting done. Right? You walked in under a scaffold, and that scaffolding is ugly. But it's what they're doing behind that scaffolding to make the front of that building beautiful. Right? That's part of tithes and offerings. Next week, so you guys remember, the office is closed. There's, there's going to be nobody here. So if you show up for something, just make sure the building's okay because we're not going to be here. We're on vacation. All right? But there's going to be a group of people in here because of your tithes and offerings. They're going to be working hard to put a new paint job in here. And they're going to paint everything. So hopefully by next Sunday, you should see a different sanctuary. All right? So that's what tithes and offerings does. So I want to thank you guys for your faithfulness because it's your faithfulness that keeps us going. It's your faithfulness that gets the bills paid. It's your faithfulness that allows us to take this building that God has blessed us and be good stewards of it so that we can bless others with it. So do me a favor. Join me as we pray for tithes and offerings right now. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just bless your name. And thank you, Father, for your provision. Because it's you who provide for us and that we can provide unto your kingdom. So thank you, Lord, that you're always there. Thank you, Lord, that you, you provide for us and you, you, you see what we go through. And you understand our needs and you continually provide for us. Father, I thank you for every person who's been faithful to giving to your kingdom. It's been faithful to giving to the work that you are doing here in Harvest Fields. Thank you, Lord, for the tithes and offerings that come in week to week, Lord. Father, I pray, take those tithes and offerings and expand them. Use them to glorify yourself. Use them, Lord, to expand your kingdom. Use them, Lord, to, to, to fix this building, Lord. Father, we just want to glorify you in everything we do. And we start by trusting you. We start by glorifying you in how we give unto your kingdom. So, Lord, I pray, give us hearts of faith, not of fear. Hearts of faith when we give unto your kingdom. Glorify yourself, Lord. Have your way. Thank you, Lord, for providing for us always. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Church, if you just focus for a few moments, we have a couple of announcements, okay? and I'm here with this week's announcement. So starting tomorrow, the church office is closed up until September 3rd, so there will be no events this week. Also, beginning next Sunday, September 3rd, we'll be having an adult Bible study happening at 9.30 in the morning 
and we're covering a new series which is in the Book of Mark. It'll be in the main office and you can just join, no registration required. We're also having another prayer night. It's called Fanning the Flame and it'll be happening on September 15th from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. So come out and join us in prayer. So that's all for this week's announcements. Let's get back to service. Come on, can we stand on our feet one more time and just give God a love offering of worship in this room? Father, we want you to dwell here. Father, we want you to dwell here, dwell in this room. Can't do anything until your spirit is in this place. It's not by might, not by power, but it's by your spirit. Come on, stretch those hands out. Come on, just talk to him for 10 seconds. Just talk to him. Tell him how much you love him. Come on. Come on, tell him how much you really need him. Tell him how much he means to you. Come on, thank him. Thank him for making a way out of no way. Just talk to him. Yes. Oh. You are our one desire, thirsty for you. I'm thirsty for you. satisfied only you can satisfy oh you are ours one desire and I'm thirsty for you anybody thirsty this morning thirsty for you this afternoon oh you are ours one desire Holy, come on, let me hear you sing. Come on, you are our, come on, church. Say And I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for you. You are my heart. One desire. Nothing else in this world but you. Nothing else in this world can satisfy but you. Sing it again. You are my. Oh. And I'm so. I'm so. Come on, sing your love song to him, and I'm thirsty. This is my love song to you today. You are my heart. One desire. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. So dwell here. Come on, throw those hands up in the air and say, Yeah. <laughs> 
minutes. Just enjoy his presence. You don't realize it, but that's actually all you need is his presence. Sometimes you think you need him to do something, but you actually just need him. So take 30 seconds, soak in his presence. Bless him for his spirit, for his angels, for his son, his blood. Bless him for his heart, for us to not just come and visit, but come and dwell. 
he's a visitor, I don't want him to leave. I don't want him to come and have a, I don't want a visitation. Is somebody with me? I need a habitation. I need him to, I need him to inhabit. I want to say like David, don't take your spirit from me. I don't want to live apart from your presence. So let's just worship him one more time. We bless the Lord today. We give him praise. Bless you, worship team. We love the name of Jesus. We love your name. I'll be singing out all week. Thank you. Come on, give it up for the worship team. We're about to go into the word. Bless God for them. Y'all can stand while I preach if y'all want to. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> so the Lord asked me a question, and I want to ask you the question. We're in the meaty ser series, and did, did we already have the contest? We had the contest already? I didn't get, uh, oh, it's at, oh, I'm standing in the way of the contest. Okay, let me hurry up, let me, let me hurry up. We in the meaty series, and we've been talking about the meat of God's word. And I just want to ask you what the Lord asked me. Are you ready for more? Are you ready for more? Pray with me. Father, we bless you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for your presence in this house. We ask you to do what only you could do. Open up blinded eyes. Unstop deaf ears. Break up fallow ground in our hearts. Make our hearts of stone a heart of flesh. That we might receive your word today. That we might hear your voice. And that we would obey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So are you ready for more? Um, I would say April 1992... I was radically saved. It was radical. My sister had a few months before committed suicide. My older sister committed suicide. And I was trying everything. I tried it all to numb and medicate the pain. And when I say I tried it all, I tried cocaine. The drug dealer on my block would say hi to me when I was coming home from work. That's how well I knew him. I was smoking marijuana from sun up to sundown. I'm not talking about a joint. I was smoking bags daily. I was drinking. I tried sex. I even tried therapy to get rid of this pain. Nothing worked. One day I was reading my Bible, April 1992. I was reading my Bible and I was smoking a joint. I told y'all I was trying everything. I was reading my Bible and smoking a joint, and I felt the grief coming on me like I was going to lose my mind. I, this feeling that I had was like I was, gonna, I was getting ready to go someplace in my mind, and I wasn't going to return. I was not going to return. I put the joint down. I put the Bible down. I went into the bathroom. I hugged the porcelain throne, the toilet. And I said, Lord, if you save me and if you help me, I'll serve you the rest of my life. In that moment, I didn't fully understand, but I felt something. A weight lifted up off my shoulders. It felt like a dark cloud lifted up. And God has been faithful ever since that day. I did all the things. I did all the things. I, I, I went to church. I went into the church. I told them I gave my life to Christ, and, and I started going to Sunday school. And we had Christian Ed at our church, and... And we had to learn everything about the Bible. We had to learn everything about our salvation. We had to learn everything about God. It wasn't no joke. And what we wasn't just going to say we were saved, but we didn't know what we were saved from and who saved us. And um, I'm doing the things. I'm reading the Bible. I'm praying. I'm going around my friends and I'm asking them to get high. I'm saying, take a hit, take a hit. Take a puff, take a puff. And when they do it, I'm saying... You guys have no idea what's happening. I don't even have any desire for what you're doing. I, it's, it's not even, I, I don't even want it. This is what I would tell them. I would be like, take a hit. I, I don't have any desire. So much so that my friend said, stop coming around. Go be with Jesus. 
You are killing our high. Get out. Go. I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. And I'm noticing that God did this radical thing. He saved me radically. Y'all have a radical story too. But I'm still smoking cigarettes. That desire has not left. I'm going to church, and as soon as I turn the corner, I'm lighting up a cigarette. I'm reading my Bible at night, and I'm praying, and I'm smoking a cigarette and going to sleep. And y'all can't tell me that I wasn't just with Jesus. Some of y'all could keep a straight face. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I was in Sunday school, and the lesson was on Colossians chapter 3. I'll never forget it. And I'm, 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 I'm loving Sunday school. I'm telling you, I'm loving this thing that God has done in my life. But I'm still holding on to cigarettes. And the Bible says in Colossians 3, if you've been risen with Christ, set your heart on things above, where God is seated at the right hand. Set your mind on things above and not on the earth. Your life is hid with Christ and God, and when Christ shall appear, then you shall appear in glory. And then the next verse says, mortify your members. Put your members to death. It was an invitation for me. It was an invitation, just like I made an invitation to you. It was an invitation. God was really saying to me, are you ready for more? See, salvation is the beginning and we we love Jesus and we praise his name and we can sing about his name all day but salvation is the beginning it that there really is an invitation into a process called sanctification thank you Lord Jesus for saving me but since you didn't take me to heaven right away how am I supposed to live in this world how am I supposed to walk through this life after you've done this radical thing. Well, the invitation was to sanctification. It was a process. I was, he made me holy positionally. I'm holy. But now I got to live holy. Is anybody with me? I'm saved from the power of sin, but now I got to live like I'm saved from the power of sin. I got to live this thing out. He was inviting me to more. He was inviting me for more. So I'm asking you, are you ready for more? The author in, of the book of Hebrews, he has the same situation happening with the believers in the book of Hebrews. I'm in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 to 14. I'm going to read it in a minute. The author of Hebrews unknown, but he's talking to Jewish converts. They're Jewish converts. They've converted to Christianity. And he's telling them, he's telling them that Jesus is superior to everything they've ever known. Jesus is greater than the angels because the angels worship Jesus. Jesus is the express image of God's glory. He's telling them that Jesus is a a greater Lord giver than Moses because Jesus is actually the word made flesh. Jesus is actually the one that fulfills every law that has ever been written. He's the fulfillment of it. He's like, Jesus is greater. He's trying to tell them that the old covenant, the new covenant in Jesus' blood is greater than the old covenant. The old covenant was a system, right? Of We kill bulls, we kill goats, we shed their blood. Their blood covers our sin. The high priest has to go in, offer blood for himself. And then for the people, and if he survived, if he went in there and survived, he would be able to offer blood for the people himself, and he would, be, he would have to do it again because that sacrifice and that priest wasn't superior as Jesus. Jesus offers his blood once and for all because he's perfect. He's the perfect sacrifice. And the author is trying to tell the people more about this priesthood. But he can't. He, he, he notices that they're not ready for more. They're not ready to go to the next step. They're not ready to hear more, to learn more. And Hebrews chapter 5, 11 through 14, there is much more we would like to say about this. But it's difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. I'm talking to somebody today. 
Don't leave yet. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature. We're not shouting today. We're not going to shout. Who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. He's saying to them, I want to show you something more. I have more for you, but you're not ready. And he's recognizing why they're not ready. The first reason why he knows they're not ready is because they're spiritually dull. I have more to say. It's too difficult to explain. Because you are spiritually dull. Since you are spiritually dull and you don't seem to listen. That word dull means lazy. I'm letting that sink. I am. You are spiritually lazy. You're sluggish. I want to tell you more. I want to give you more. But I'm, I'm discerning that you're lazy. And how am I discerning that? Because you do not listen. You're not approaching what you're, you've been taught. You're not approaching what, I've, what I'm giving you. You're not approaching how I'm leading you with faith and obedience. You're not doing anything with what I've already taught you. Yeah, it sounded good. Yeah, it sounded great. I'm hopping. I'm skipping. I'm dancing. I'm sweating. I'm doing it all. But there's no faith. There's no obedience after I just taught you something. So it might be that you're spiritually dull. So I'm going to ask you today, are you spiritually dull? Do you rec do, do, is, there a, is there a passionlessness? about the word of God are you not taking God at his word are you not doing what he says when he shows you something are you not actually being obedient are you not approaching what he's saying to you in faith even if it's hard you might be spiritually dull he says I can't tell them more yet because I think they're spiritually dull then he says you have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others Instead, you need someone to teach you the basic things about God's word. You're fat. Y'all mad at me, right? Well, I'm fat too. Don't be offended. I'm not a size two. You're overweight. You've been sitting in church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday. You're watching YouTube. You're watching Facebook preachers, Instagram preachers. You're doing seven devotionals a day. You're fat. You know why? Because you're not giving anything away. You're keeping it all for yourself. Am I saying you should be up here teaching? Am I saying you should be in a classroom teaching? No, I'm saying it doesn't matter. You are supposed to be teaching. I don't care if you got one verse down. You need to call somebody up and be like, this is what God said to me. Oh, wait a minute. How you? Did you ever read this verse? What did he say to you? You want to be delivered from gossip? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but you're struggling with gossip. Stop calling your friends to talk about your friends. Call your friends and ask them. Let, look, I just read this. What do you think God is saying? They might be like, I don't have no time. I gotta. They might be like, you're not talking about Susie. I got to go. <laughs> you don't got the latest. <laughs> I don't have time for you. You might lose some friends, but that's okay. You won't be gossiping. You'll be talking about the goodness of the Lord and what he's showing you. And everything that you receive, you're supposed to give it away. To whom much is given, much is required. Tell your children whether they want to hear it or not. Trust me. I have three grown adult children. There's a plenty of times I was telling them, this is what God is saying. This is what God is saying. They didn't want to hear it. But I guarantee you later on, they'd be like, Mom, I was in this thing. This thing was happening. And I remember you said, yes. 
I said it. Give everything away. You ought to be teaching by now. I should not have to tell you the basic things. I should not have to tell you that Jesus died to pay for your sin. Come on, church. He's talking to believers. He's talking to a group of believers. They should understand about their salvation. If they got baptized, they should understand that going down in that water is not going to save them. They should understand actually going down in that water is not going to do a thing. Y'all messed up now. Y'all like, oh, call Pastor Mitchell. Where is he? <laughs> it's a symbol. It symbolizes you died with Christ and your old man was buried and dead. It's a symbol that when you come up out of that water, it's a symbol of the new creation that you are in Christ. It's symbolic. Now you can believe like the old Baptist that somebody's trouble in the water. You can believe it. It's okay. But you need to know the truth. Jesus himself said, go. What did he say? He said, go, evangelize, go. He said, go, baptize and teach. You think that's for the evangelist with his name, with his big truck outside, with his big crew. No, that's for you and me. Go, evangelize. Tell somebody about what Jesus did in your life. Baptize people. Yes, you can baptize people outside of the church. Yes. Yes, you can. And teach everything you get. You have to give it away. Because the more you receive, it's reaping and sowing. You sow in the word. You reap in a harvest. You sow in the word. You reap in a harvest. Sow and reap. Sow and reap. Give everything away. You want more revelation? Give the revelation you have away. He says, you're spiritually dull. I also discern your spiritual infants. You ought to be teaching. You're spiritually dull. You ought to be teaching. But you need people to teach you, and you're a spiritual infant. You are like babies who need milk. And you cannot eat solid food for someone who lives on milk is still an infant, infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Just hang with me. Hang with me. Hang with me. It makes going to get a little tight. It's okay, though. We always making people feel bad because you want the milk. I can't get you off of milk. Milk is nourishment. The Bible says, Jesus says, sorry, Apostle Peter says, desire as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of God's word that you may grow by it. Milk is not bad. It's not bad that you are still on the milk. The issue is what are you doing with the milk? Are you allowing the milk to nourish you? Are you allowing the milk to cause you to grow? That's the issue. And that's, I already talked about this, that's about my obedience, that's about me reading the verse of scripture, looking up the word. I can tell you what mortified meant, but I surely wasn't mortifying my flesh. But I read it. I could tell you what the Greek word was too, but I wasn't doing it. It was how I was handling the milk. So that's the issue. Don't despise people for being on milk. All of us need milk. God's word is milk. It's nourishment. I know you're a spiritual infant. It's right here in the verse because you don't know how to do what is right. What's the first word your kids learned? No. All three of mine, they learned no before they learned mommy. They knew no before they learned daddy. Why? Because that's all I was saying to them. No, 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 you can't do that. No, stop doing that. No, move from over there. No, don't touch that. That's all I was saying to them was no. This is how I know you're an infant. If I'm always telling you, no, no, you can't do that. No, that don't sound like God. No, what, 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 are, you, what, are, you, what are you saying? Who's with me? Somebody got to be with me. Y'all yeah. having some conversations and you're telling the same people over and over, no, that's not God. No, that's not his will. No, that's not his word says. What's happened is you're talking to an infant. It's okay. Because if I'm going to go anywhere, if I'm get ready for more, I need to know where I'm at. If I'm going to move from any place, I need to actually discern accurately where I am. So if I'm an infant, it just means I'm not handling the milk right. So what do I need to do? What do I need to do? I need to get myself ready for more. How do I do it? It's in the next verse. 
Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training, it could be training, the word means practice, the word means exercise, have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. How do I see growth in my own spiritual life? How do I know that I'm becoming spiritually mature? Because I'm exercising my spiritual senses. I am becoming spiritually aware. I have spiritual disciplines. What, are, what does that look like? It looks like I read the word, but I'm not just a hearer. Come on, Bible scholars. I'm not just a hearer. I'm a doer. I'm not just reading the Bible to see who Jesus is and, oh, he's lovely. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, he's wonderful. Oh, he's great. I'm looking for myself. And usually what I'm seeing is, oh, you're a mess. Oh, you need to get that together. Oh, you need to work on that. I'm spiritually mature when I start to do what the word says. When I place a value, when I put myself under the authority of the word. I want to do my own thing all the time. I am human, just like you are. I'm not just talking about myself. I want to do what I want to do all the time. But I place myself under the authority of God's word. I'm not just a Christian on Sunday when I'm doing an assignment for harvest. I, I, I'm Christ-like. I want to be Christ-like. So that means my life has to be under the authority of God's word. And as I do what he says, as I exercise spiritual muscles, I get spiritual discipline. I get discernment. I can spot the devil miles away. He's trying to trip me up by something somebody did on my job. He's trying to trip me up by something my son or daughter's doing. He's trying to trip me up. He's trying to get me anxious, so I go buy some haagen and eat it all. Y'all won't even know it was in the house. He's trying to cause me to be anxious. He's trying to cause a situation. It's all, it's all for in the distance. It might be, it looked like it might happen, so I'm anxious. I'm worried. I have no peace. I have no sleep. I have no anxiety, but I could spot him a mile away because I've been exercising my spiritual my spiritual muscles by reading the word by learning who the enemy is by learning the power that I have in the name of Jesus and by his word by learning I'm exercising I'm practicing I'm training do I win every battle no but the victory is already won this is how I know I'm spiritually mature I'm training, I'm practicing, I'm exercising. The word doesn't fall on bad soil because I'm asking the Lord to tend to the garden of my heart all the time. You know what's in my heart, Lord. Tend to it. Help me to tend this thing. So the Lord is asking, are you ready for more? Maybe you're not ready. Maybe you're spiritually dull. Maybe you ought to be teaching but you need to be taught. Maybe you're not handling the milk of the word in a way that it's going to actually provide life and nourishment for you. But God wants us to be ready for more. So what, what do I need to do? I need to, I need to ask God for a hunger for his word. There's nothing that God requires of me that he won't help me do. I don't know the God that you serve. But I learned this a long time ago. I don't have to do anything without his help. Because his spirit lives on the inside of me. That's why you don't hear me talk about a best friend because I don't have a best friend. The Holy Spirit is my best friend. There's nobody in this room who can tell you, oh, that's my best. I said, that's my best friend. Nobody while I walked on this planet, I love all of y'all, but y'all not my best friend. The Holy Spirit is my best friend. Everything that I need, everything I need to do, everything I read in his word, everything he's requiring of me. The Spirit of God will help me do it. So if I need a passion for his word, if I notice that my passion is wavering. It's, I, I don't even want to, 
I look at the Bible and then I just put something on top of the Bible so I don't see it really anymore. I take the app off of the home screen. I need to ask God for a hunger. And while I'm asking him for a hunger for his word, I also need to be asking him to starve everything, every competing craving, starve it. Give me a hunger for your word, God, but you know the stuff that's going on, on the inside of me, starve it. Starve every competing craving. Job says, I need God's word more than my necessary food. I need God's word more than the food that I eat, natural food. You need God's word because you are a spiritual being. The source of your life starts with your spirit that was made alive. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. You need his word to be sustained. So I got to ask God for a hunger for his word. And I got to ask him to starve every competing craving, starve it, kill it. That addiction, that pornography, that, that girl, that guy. Those pursuits, whatever they may be, that will take me far away from you. Starve it, dry it up. Y'all don't know, I pray this prayer for myself and my children all the time. Everything that competes with you, God, dry it up, starve it, kill it. Then I got to stay hungry. So how do you stay hungry? In the natural, after you eat, you're not hungry anymore. Unless God needs to touch your appetite. I don't know. I was there before. I ate and I still want to eat. Okay, anyway, that was just me. <laughs> Nobody was there with me. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you, sis. <laughs> In the spiritual, the more you eat, the more you want to eat. The more you drink of his spirit, the more you want of his spirit. The more you eat his word, the more you want his word. Because the Bible says, blessed are those who, are, who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They will be filled. That's a promise. Red letter. I don't know if you know what a red letter is. But in your red letter Bible, the words of Jesus, he said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And if I hunger for his word, and if I hunger to be obedient to him, and if I hunger for time in his face, that is a hunger that he will fill. I got to stay hungry. I got to stay hungry. I also have to never lose my awe. I have to never lose my awe. What am I talking about? As you fellowship with God, as you read his word, as you, be, you approach his word with faith and obedience and you do it, as you exercise your spiritual muscles, you find out when you ask for stuff, it may not be how you want him to answer it. But he answers. You find out that when you ask him, he does something. He may not do what you wanted him to do, but he certainly moves. Some people think I asked him once, huh? I shouldn't ask him again. But let me tell you something. If I actually believe that you can't do what I'm asking, I'm going to ask you one time and then I'm never going to ask you again. If I don't have any faith that you could do what I'm asking, eventually I'm going to stop asking you. But if I know that you are the sovereign Lord who has the power to make a promise and fulfill the, the promise also, I'm going to ask and I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to seek and I'm going to keep seeking. I'm going to knock and I'm going to keep knocking. Until you do what you said. And until you do what you said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait with you. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait for you. I'm not waiting for my kids to act a certain way. I'm not waiting for the bank account to look a certain way. I'm not w waiting for the ministry or, the, or, the, or the, the, um, the, the spouse. I'm waiting for God. I'm waiting with him. And what he does, what he says he's going to do. Because church, he will do what he said he will do. You may not keep your word. I may not keep my word to you. I might break it. I might break a promise. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I might break a promise. But God will not ever break a promise. If he said it, he'll do it. If he speaks it, it's coming to pass. When he doesn't, I got to worship him. I got to worship. I got to worship. I can't run on to the next thing. I got to stop. I waited for him. I asked. I waited. I'm worshiping. I can't never lose this. 
that I have to expect him to do it all, all over again. I can't lose my expectation. When you fellowship around God's word and you see what he will do, it will create an expectation in you. When you listen to your friends telling you about how they was dry and passionless and they started praying, well, God, give me a passion for his word. Then they telling you they can't stay out of God's word. You ask him for the same thing. You'll have an expectation that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. So here's my question to you. This is what I want you to hear. I want you to hear the invitation. Are you ready for more? Are you ready for more? What I'm asking you to do is stop reading the Bible for information. Stop reading the Bible so you can tell people I read the Bible. Stop reading the Bible so you can tell people I'm reading the Bible. Stop reading the Bible like it's a, a great drama. Great adventure. Read the Bible for, read that information for revelation. Read that information until you get a revelation. I don't care if you're in the same chapter, the same verse, the same book for months. It doesn't matter. Read it until you get the revelation that God has for you. The thing that you don't see right now, that you need to see. Stay in his word until you find it. The answer is there. The way to the answer is there. The steps to the answer is there. It's revelation. You don't know it now. It's unseen right now. Read the Bible for, read that information for revelation. Now, when you get the revelation, you got to apply it. Because y'all be walking around talking about, let me tell you this revelation God gave me. I got this revelation. You can't, you can't wait to tell everybody about the revelation you got. But you are doing nothing with that revelation. You're not even applying the revelation yourself. You're just trying to make people think you're so spiritual. I'm talking to somebody. You might be in the room. You might be online. Apply the revelation. Do what he says. If he says flee from fornication, do it. Remember, he'll help you. He'll help you do whatever he says. If he wants you to start, stop lying and be honest, stop lying. No matter even what it, it costs you, you'd be like, man, guess what? That, what I just said wasn't true. <laughs> you'd be having a conversation, you, you, but you're making a commitment. The Lord said, be honest. I just said, what I just said wasn't even true. <laughs> Apply the revelation. Apply it. Because when you apply the revelation, that's when you actually see transformation. Your life is transformed by the revelation that you apply. You won't even recognize yourself. I'm telling you, some of y'all are struggling with stuff because you won't apply the revelation that God already gave you. you your life could be transformed. Just apply the revelation that God gave you. So, I'm closing. Y'all was like, okay, hurry up. <laughs> and you better stay hungry, brother. We staying hungry. I'm serious. I'm talking to everybody. We, we got to stay hungry. These are last and evil days. There's no time to be distracted. It's no time for distraction. We got to stay hungry. And we got to get around hungry people. My brother said, we hungry. Well, y'all heard them. Y'all not hungry. Get around them. Do whatever you have to do to stay hungry right now. It's dark. Dark days are upon us and ahead. We can't take God's word. Oh, wow. Well, let me just... I'll hang out with this for a minute, in and out. No, that time is over. Are you ready for more? You think I'm asking you, do you want another car? Do you want another house? Do you want a better job? Do you want more money? I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you, are you ready for more? Are you ready for more revelation? Are you ready for that revelation to cause you to be even more obedient? Are you ready to be wholly devoted? Are you ready for more? That's the more I'm talking about. I'm not talking about things. This is the invitation, he says, in Revelation chapter 3. He says, behold, 
I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. That's Revelation 3, 20 in the King James Bible. I got saved reading the King James Bible. So I love King James. Here's the invitation. Now, the context, because I, I, y'all ain't getting me in trouble with Pastor Mitchell. The context of this verse, he just finished talking to the church at Laodicea. He said, I wish you were hot or cold, but you're lukewarm, so I'm going to spit you out. This is the context. He's talking to the, a church. But God knocks on the door of our heart all the time. He did it when he wanted us to see our need for salvation. He was knocking at the door. For me, my sister took her life, and a few months later, I got my life. Do you understand? So that death in my family, it was Jesus knocking at the door of my heart. But remember, this verse is to believers. It's to a corporate church, and it's to everybody who reads the letter. I am standing at the door of your heart. I want to come in. Why I like the King James is because of this word sup, because this word has wrecked me. Because the word sup means I want to make you share in my most intimate and blissful contact. Jesus wants to invite you to the best meal that you've ever had. Pastor Mitchell said it last week. The Bible is the only book that you read and the author is present. He's inviting us to a meal that he's prepared for us. It's his word. I mean, God is probably a Michelin star chef. He probably is. He probably can make the best meals ever. Just look at his word. You're not going to get a better meal. You will not. You won't get a meal where you see yourself, but you have hope. Where you see the trouble and the, the discouragement, but you know on the other side of it is encouragement and victory. What other word do you see that you've been loved, so loved that even before you was born, God sent his son to die for you? What other meal is prepared for you? He wants to be intimate. He doesn't just want to prepare the meal and leave. He wants to sit down across from you, lean close. You know when you eat and the people be all up in your face? He be like, could you just step back? I'm trying to eat. Jesus want to be up in your face while you having this meal. He wants to create joyful, blissful is joyful. The most intimate, joyful contact. There's nothing that's going to satisfy like this time that he's preparing and inviting you into as you open up his word and fellowship with him around his word. Nothing will satisfy you. I know that from experience because I tried everything. And nothing satisfies like his word. Why? Because he is his word. So I'm going to ask you again, are you ready for more? Are you ready for more revelation? That's going to lead to more obedience. That's what I'm asking you about this morning. That's what the Lord is asking us about. Are we ready to go on a journey to see more, which is going to require more obedience? When you see God do what he does, when you obey him, when you show your whole devotion to him, when you lean into his word and his presence and his spirit to follow him, to follow him, to follow him. To lay down your own desires and your own will. To lay it down and pick his will up. When you see what he does, you will be more devoted. 
You'll be like, there's nobody in all the earth like him. You'll never want to stop singing and praising his name. You want to tell everybody about him. Everything that you get, you want to give it away because you know you're setting yourself up to receive more. Are you ready for more? Stand with me. You're not, you're not answering that question for me. I'm not answering it for you. I'm not. I need more. Come on, who's honest in the room? I need more. First, if you're in this room and you are spiritually dull, and it's not about a laziness about God's word, but it's about responding to his voice. He's been calling you. He's been standing at the door of your heart, and he's been knocking because he... he, he he desires that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. His son died for you already. You've already been forgiven, but you're, you're not responding. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Today, if you hear his voice, today could be the day of your salvation. I need the altar workers up front. Can, can you take one moment? And ask yourself, do you need to surrender your life? If you want to surrender your life, I need you to raise your hand. If you hear the voice of God and today you decide that you're not going to ignore that voice any longer. If you're online and you have not surrendered your life to Christ... I want you to put in the chat, I need Jesus. Sis, are you coming to give your life to Christ? You praying? Okay, good. Just step up to somebody who's here. I know for a fact that not everybody in this room is saved. I know it by God's spirit. I know there's people in this room that have not surrendered their life to Christ. And also, there's people in the ro this room that have wandered from God. We don't know. We can't tell. Because you're doing the same thing that you've always done. But you, your heart is far. I know you're in the room. And I won't move until the Spirit of God moves. If you need to come, we are here. If you're in the balcony and you need to come down, it's okay. We're not going anywhere. This is the most important thing that happens in this church today. If you need to give your life to Christ, just step up to somebody and say, I need Jesus. That's it. If you want to return, if you want to return, if you've been running and you, you want to return today, just step up and say, I want to return to Jesus. It's okay. If you're still in your seat, you're praying. If you're still in your seat, you're praying. Come on, set a fire. Set a fire, set a fire, set a fire. Set a fire, Lord, set a fire. Set a fire. Set a fire, Lord. Lord, speak. Call your children home. Call your sons and your daughters home. Every competing voice we silence now in Jesus' name. And we ask you, Jesus, by your spirit, to draw your sons and daughters back home in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We give you honor and we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you glory. We thank you for every soul that you are saving. We thank you for every daughter or son that you are bringing back home. We thank you, Jesus. We know that you are good and you are kind. And we know that you are merciful. And we know that you are gracious. And we know that it's your desire that none would live apart from you. So we bless you. 
And we praise you for what you're doing today in this house and what you're doing online. We thank you. My brothers and sisters, come. If you're coming for, for salvation, there's somebody who can pray with you. There's somebody up front who can pray. Come on, bless the Lord. People are giving their life to Christ. Y'all don't seem too excited. I think you forgot about when you, when he saved your soul. Come on, church. People are coming. We're going to let the Holy Spirit do what he want to do. People are coming and giving their life to Christ. People are coming and returning. We're not moving until the Lord does what he wants to do in this house. Today is your day of salvation. If you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Today is your day. If you've been wandering and you need to come back, step up, step up, step up. If you've been wandering and you want to come back home, the Father's arms are open for you. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, move. Move, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Come on, sis. Step right up. Is somebody here who can pray with you? Yes. The Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is moving. He's doing what only he can do. He's setting free. He's delivering. He's healing. He's the only one who can do it. So we bless you, Jesus. Come on, let's... Give the Lord a praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. My brothers and sisters, if you're in this room and you are experiencing a dry season, first I want to tell you, been there, done that. That's why I'm telling y'all, we got to stay hungry. We got to stay hungry. Been there, done that. You experiencing a dry season. You're, right now, you're not excited about Christ and his word. and You're not excited about prayer. You're not excited about worship and the things of God. You, you've grown dull. It's okay. Been there, done that. There's no shame. There's no judgment. The Lord wants to set a fire down in your soul. The Lord wants to give you a passion for his word, a passion to obey him. If that's you, just raise your hand where you are. Raise your hand where you are. Raise your hand. Don't be, don't be ashamed. Shame the devil right now. Don't be ashamed. You raising your hand because you want the fire of God to fall on you? You want a passion and a renewed sense of his love and care for you? You want a hunger that will never wane? Come on, church. It's hands up everywhere. Hands are up everywhere. Come on. Y'all still ready to pray at the altar? Because I'm about to call some more people up. Come on, step out of your seat. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? How hungry are you? How hungry? How hungry are you? Come on, Pastor Zena. Pastor Zena, we need you praying. Come on. How hungry are you? How? Tell me. Show me right now. Show the Lord right now. How hungry are you? I need you to pray and pray fast. Come on, 
church. Come on. You, you hungry, right? You want a desire for him. Step up in front of somebody who's going to pray with you.
sisters. We bless God. Give God a shout of praise right now. If you believe, if you believe that God heard your prayer and God answered your prayer, then you give him a shout. Remember, don't lose your awe. You ask, wait until you see the answer. Worship when you do and then expect him to do it all over again. Lord, we bless you, we praise you, we give you honor and glory. We love you. All we know is what we saw, but we know you've done so much more. And so we bless you and we thank you for Harvest and for this worship team and for the musicians and for the altar workers and the pastors and the leaders and the, the ushers and security and the teachers teaching downstairs, we thank you for every servant in this house. We bless you for your spirit. We ask, Lord, that you would seal the work that you've done. Do not let the enemy come and steal a thing. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, we ask that you would bless us and protect us the balance of this week until we meet again together. We're always in your presence, but until we come together again, we ask for your blessing of prosperity, health, and peace upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, church, say amen with me. Amen. 